a lot of my music was for myself, it was about myself, for myself. And it was at a point where it's like, I, I didn't have any fans. It was really just me using music as like a diary. I was just really talking about a lot of things that were happening. I was going through a lot of stuff. You know you right, man. Never gonna quit. Hell no. The first time I heard Nasty C's music, like, you know, I'm thinking he's just a rapper at first. And he was just like, yeah, this is some of the stuff I'm working on. And like, he has such a diverse um, catalog. And he kind of reminds me of Kendrick in that way, where he's kind of, you know, he's got this kind of like, reserve kind of thing, but as soon as he gets on that mic, it's a, a whole different animal. Nice litter, it was flashy lights, nice triggers, and every time these flashes flicker, I'm like, ah. To work with somebody like that, that's even outside of the States, just to come to South Africa and to find somebody like him is just, it's unreal. I think you have a lot of artists that love so many different things about the music industry, and I think right off the bat, what I realized is he just loves making music. Would you believe me if I told you I never want to go home? Never look at my phone. Would you look at me wrong? Damn, I'm in my zone. I, I'm in my zone. Beginning of this one, and then comp that section on, on top of this one. Did you get on my yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm ready. I'm hyped now. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm hyped. I'm working on my album titled I Love It Here. We're doing a writing camp here in Cape Town just because I, I chose Cape Town because it's like it's quiet. Landscape is amazing. It's inspiring. And at the same time, just to get all the guys that I'm working with, all the artists and the producers out of their busy lives and just pull them into this quiet world where we can just get creative, man, and just enjoy making music, you know? We've got producers who have come from Sweden, from the UK, from the States, LA, Atlanta, uh, South African producers as well. What's up? How you doing? Nice to meet you. Cheers. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Yo, I'm, I'm dead. Come on, Sean. Pick a better. Yeah. Yeah. I love it here. I love it here. I love it here. I love it here for me means just being at a place where I feel like I'm 100% myself and I don't have to change myself to fit in and I feel comfortable, I feel inspired, I feel motivated, I feel loved, I feel welcome. I don't even have fears really, but I have drive. I'm ready, man. I had a slow start to the day, but I'm here now. Hey, okay, I think we should do one for one. Okay, finish something. I decided to make this album around the time where just like making music or even just like being alive wasn't like, didn't seem that important to me anymore. I just felt like, why, why are we doing all this? This is pointless, you know? So that's when I, I, I decided to change my whole attitude and that's how the whole concept of this album came about, you know? You know, when they explained to me the concept, I feel like everybody can relate to that. You get to a point where you're, you're you feel gratitude, like, and you're, you're thankful for what you have and, and the place that you're at right now. Yeah, I say to live is to love and to love is to live and I'm giving them that vibe so they loving the kid. They might jump for the kid, run for the kid. If they want to be on their side, tell them love is the this project, this thing, you know, working with these incredible artists, like um, they brought me in to executive produce, worked with artists such as Kendrick Lamar, Kanye West, 50 Cent, Eminem, Dr. Dre. You know, you're making decisions about the project, the direction of it, what's going to work to make the best product. We got a lot of room, and you'll get like an Afro beat here, R and B hip-hop, downstairs and recording, you know? I'm just trying to find my space in every, every session. But it's, it's not that difficult as well, because we, it's like a family affair. Yeah. He's more hands-on. He's very approachable, very, very kind. You know, he could tell you something like, hey, I want you to do this, do that, do this. It's just, it makes it so much better because when the producer and the artist can have that connection, that can help us really make hits because it's like the energy is being cultivated at the same time. 
the result is is just so much better, and I really like that about Junior. Yeah. Just like yeah, yeah, say that. I've just met everyone for the first time and it's been amazing because everyone's really active, everyone's doing their thing. You don't know who's done what until you exchange your Instagrams or your, you know, your socials and you're just like, <laughs> okay. <laughs>I got to work with like people who've made some of my favorite songs. Like I lost my mind when I like went through some of their catalogs, like Tiggy, Khalil. I am a songwriter and I sing, so most of the time it's me, you know, like on a track singing or writing a song, yeah. And I think it's really nice to work with people who are willing to like be interactive about the process and just Ciao. Take it again. Take. Yep. Take time then so that they're the same. Both of them are the same time. Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, you know where the farm is. I think my sound has changed for sure. Yeah. You know, back then I thought, okay, hip hop is just one thing that sounds like this and it looks like this. I used to, I used to have a problem with just doing a song that had just melodies. You know, now it's like I can do that. I can have multiple songs. It's just I'm not even rapping really. I'm singing. Treat you like a goddess, look at your body. Cut it, recut it. You sing and sing. Now you cut like it. Before you were like here, you were a little here. Now you can now. Your vocals now are crazy. I fuck with it as is, but I just want you to think about that. I think you'll take it here. You'll take it. I promise you. That's an emotional performance. The way you sing it now, bro. You know when the record was made? Feb 22. There's really not much of a difference between like work with the artists in the States and here. I mean, I think he approaches it the same way. I think he's just another level in terms of writing his, you know, and just, and just how, how he's into his craft. You know what I mean? Um, I compare him to, you know, a lot of greats that I've worked with. He's right up there. The main thing is just learning how to finish records. He has that and I've seen it, I've heard it, but it's like, he's gotta be consistent with it. I do have writer's block a lot. I might search what to do when you get writer's block. Just read a bunch of stuff or just take a break and just completely just step away from it altogether. Just go play a sport or hang out with family, hang out with friends, go for a drive, go do something totally unrelated to that. He always takes his quiet moments to reflect as he's processing and doing his thing from an artistic perspective. And I think that's what he injects into a lot of his records. Music and just like real life experiences, they go hand in hand, man. motivation now is my son Oliver. My biggest, he's not even here yet, but that's my biggest motivation. Now I know what to do here too. Oh. Dear Oliver, it's like a note that I'm writing to, to him, you know? The first verse I'm speaking to him now in the present tense is like, he's not here yet. And I'm just telling him about the things that I do on a daily, just to connect with him and stuff like that. Like sleeping with my hand on his mother's belly and stuff like that. No dirt on my knee. A month away till you breathe the air that I breathe. It's 5 a.m. in his booth and I will not leave until I Yeah. Till I finish this letter and wrap. I don't think you should be wedded to sequence right now. Don't get too caught up. You still create. You still create. So 
for speaking. Yeah, just having having an intro and an outro really helps me know what's missing. What's going on? Yeah. So what happens is, you know, just leave it just like <laughs> for now, for now, just, just like, like that. that. Yeah, just yeah, like no, that. So, so that was, yeah. That's a story. And that's a story. That's and then you leave it, and then you just come with like a special, like, on the deluxe. That's when you put the full thing on. You see what I'm saying? For once, I agree with those. It's very hard to know when your album is done. As the artist, it's very hard to know because you're constantly trying to make it better. For you, it's like there's always room for improvement. Even though some songs might be perfect to like other people who listen to it, people who didn't make it, you know? So it's like, it, it, it's tricky as, as the artist. I mean, I like those, um, I feel, I feel like I heard like violin or some strings or whatever. Like maybe, maybe you just can do a string section on that. Yeah. Yeah. He has over 60 plus songs. <laughs> you know, really like three years worth of music that we have to like kind of go through and try to find the best, the best like possible combinations of songs to make a body of work. When you can play it from top to bottom without feeling like, ah, this song doesn't belong or something's missing, then I think it's complete, you know? How did this one end up being potential? I don't remember us doing that. <laughs> What's that one? Kevin, Black Kevin. card. Uh, he put it there. He put did it there. Really? Someone really? loves it. Yeah, so. <laughs> did we play it that night? Yeah. We, we did, didn't. Bro. We didn't even play it. We did, we did. He we just did, put did. it there. I we think did, he did. likes it. No, 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 we did, we did. Yeah? yeah. Nah, not, not in the session. Nah, we not, did. Not, not, not in the session. When we sat down, nah, we didn't play it. We didn't play it. The biggest challenge that artists have, creatives in general have, is you want to to give people like something that is true. And most of the time that's you being vulnerable. And that comes with a lot of challenges. Are people going to like this? Are people going to vibe with this? And then you have obviously the, um, the suits that will be like, oh, this would work. We would want to push you. So it's a tricky space because there has to be like a balance. You should be here right now. I won't speak for him and say it's hard to go in the studio to write, whatever, because he's very profound and very prolific. To me, it looks and appears quite easy what he does. But it always looks easier to the people on the outside who are not doing it. And I think people think they see the glitz and the glory, they see the traveling and the highfalutin and all the things that come with being a famous uh, hip-hop star. All of this is fun. It's fun and it's work. It's work we enjoy. It's work we love, but it is work. When we first worked with him in London, he just came into the room. We played him lots of ideas. He's just super creative. And as soon as we started playing some music and just you can see his mind working, you know, and seeing his process, it's super inspiring, you know, and when I flew in, I came in like in the early evening, he was already in the studio and he was the last man standing that night. So I just, yeah, thought that was very like admirable. In a way, I still kind of use my music as a diary. As I said, I understand now that millions of people listen to it, but at the end of the day, it's still for me to come back and listen to and I don't know, I kind of, I heal myself by singing or rapping about these things and coming back to it and listening to it later. When I get personal about it and I speak about real life events, I feel like it just, I don't know, resonates even more. Just to get to work with an artist who doesn't have limits, and doesn't box themselves and doesn't make the music anything beyond the music. The music isn't about trending, it's not about numbers, it's not about all this other stuff, you know? The only thing we should focus on is making sure the music is good. His music is like at its greatest as it's ever been. Feels like he's just getting started, you know? I think this is gonna change 
South African hip hop. His sound is also very different, I think. And it also still has Nasisi from Helna <laughs> when we first heard him, right? Which I think is very exciting, which is what people have been hungry for. This camp is an example of I love it here. I think everyone, if you did an exit interview with everyone, I think you'll have a consistent thing. I mean, everyone wants to come back. Everyone can't wait till they see the person again. If we'd made no music and the music was terrible, we would have still won at that, but the music was incredible. I really liked this album. I felt really good making it. This is like the most colorful, brightest album I've ever, I've ever made. I want my fans to listen to this album and feel, I just want them to feel good, man, about themselves, about life, about a lot of that stuff. So I hope that it gives them that same feeling or pulls them out of a dark place like how it did me. I love it here. 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 I fucking love it here. I love it here. I truly, from the bottom of my heart, love it here. Got a couple that's ready to pop the trunk for the kid, and a couple that got some junk in the trunk for the kid. Like mothers telling me how I'm saving their kids' life. I'm becoming a superhero in real life. Me and strangers while I travel the globe, and I hug them like they one of my own, and it just feels right. It's not enough for me to say that I'm known. If I can make you feel you never alone, it makes me feel nice. Make me feel like I'm alive for a reason.